Yeah. Hello and welcome to the Gaggle World Challenge, and if necessary, destroy media narratives. I'm George Samueli. With me today, of course, is Johnny Apple, who has graced us with his presence, and of course, his colleague, uh, Peter Lavelle. So, Peter, the United Kingdom now has a new prime minister, uh, Sokia Starmer has uh, gone to Buckingham Palace and accepted the invitation by King Charles III to form a government. Uh, the outgoing uh, prime minister, uh, Rishi Sunak, has departed uh, number 10 Downing Street, and um, he has announced that um, he will also be stepping down as leader of the party, which is entirely to be expected, uh, but he will hang on while yet there's, <laughs> there'll be yet another election for a new leader. Um, now, the the which results... I'm sure they'll make a, ha a a hash of that too. Yes. This is this is exactly the people we're talking. About. You you get clobbered, you get thumped, but when you have a le leadership um, uh, a vote, you're gonna you're, you're gonna be pissing on each other all over again. The, <laughs> these people, the, the nature demands of their their demise. Okay. Yes. Um, now, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, Sunak himself, of course, um, stood as party leader. He lost the uh, election for party leader. He was um, uh, the, the 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 person who won. Uh, Liz Truss became prime minister. Became, but she was the shortest prime minister in history, and no, um, and, no, and no. she was ousted. And then Sunak took over, even though he had never actually. <laughs> won an election as a uh, party leader. But anyway, Sunak is going. And um, he, there was obviously a disastrous night uh, for the Tories. And the, the good thing is the number of um, uh, Tory faces have been defeated. Uh, uh, Graham Shapps, the outgoing um, UK defense minister, lost his constituency. To the the ever belligerent Tobias Elwood, he's he's sort of Britain's John McCain uh, gone, um, uh, Liz Truss gone, um, Jacob Rees Mogg gone, Binks. yeah, Binks, yeah, yeah, um, and um, you know the 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 disappointment was it it looked uh, a lot of the time last night that Jeremy Hunt would also be going, but somehow he managed to uh, prevail. And doubtless will throw his hat in the ring um, for the, uh, the the leadership uh, contest. Um, however, the interesting thing is, you know, uh, you know, media are hyping huge historic landslide, Labour, you know, marching um, to this great uh, victory. The but when you look at the numbers, these were really bad results for Labour. I mean, there were bad results for the Tories, but there were very bad results uh, for Labour. Uh, Very few people are going to hear this message, so keep right. going, George. Exactly, I, I, yeah. it's exactly the same thing. The very bad results of Labour. Just, I just introduced that the concept. Labour got fewer votes than Jeremy Corbyn did in 2019. That was that historic defeat for Labour, which led to obviously uh, Corbyn's departure as leader of the party. Labour got fewer votes than it did then. And as a percentage of the vote, it's pretty much remained the same. So, you know, Labour has not won any more votes than, than it did in 2019. So that was a historic defeat, and then Labour hasn't won any more. So, uh, so if we look at these um, numbers, which are quite, um, quite, quite um, fascinating. So here, here's, for instance, the, the poll. Um, this is July the 3rd. And as you can see, this was the prediction. Labour would win 40% of the vote. Conservatives would win 22% of the vote. Reform 16, Lib Dems 11, and so on. But as it turned out, Labour fell well short of uh, 40%. Um, and then here, we've got what Labour did get. Labour won 33.8%. So that's around 34%. Can you, can you see, Peter? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, 34%. The Conservatives got around 23.7%. So the difference between them is not 20%, according to that poll, the, 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 the July the 3rd poll, which said that the, the, the gap between Labour and Conservative would be 20%. It's actually 10%. Reform got 14.3%, um, and the Lib Dems got 12.2%. 
um, Green 6.8 and the Scottish Nationalists, I'm happy to say, I mean, almost completely wiped out. Um, but as we'll see, that big win for reform, getting 14.3 bigger than Lib Dems, did not translate into seats. But that, um, it, this is the, how the Reform Party performed is the story of this election. Yes, it's a, a very a, 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 an extraordinarily good performance, but it didn't translate into seats. Well, and, I don't know. I, I saw it. Um, George is more of a numbers guy than I am. How many places did the Reform Party come in second to? Ah, that's the, a that that that's a very good question. That's that's the key. To this whole that's thing. A, that's exactly right. I mean, they came in. It's it's more than a hundred uh, seats yeah. that they came that's in. The story. Uh, second. Yeah, um, and um, and therefore they will be the challenge to Labour. What Labour did is they pushed out the Tories in that, um, you know, that that industrial working class areas that Boris Johnson delivered for the Tories in 2019 um labor won that back but in those areas it's reform that uh, that has come in second and uh, farage said i unfortunately i'm gonna have to paraphrase but in the next election labor it, uh, it's your turn next it's your turn next. that's it that's exactly what he said yeah exactly right um so here this is how it stands um 648 uh, of 650 declared. So Labour has 412 seats plus 211. As I say, they won fewer votes than they did in 2019, yet they've won 211 uh, seats, additional seats. Uh, the Tories have lost 250. Ooh. So essentially, you, you can see these numbers. Labour has a two to one advantage in uh, M a number of MPs to the Tories, yet the gap between the two is only 10%. Yep. Yep. Um, notice also the turnout. Turnout is less than 60%. So when you look at it and say, okay, 60%, only 60% of registered voters voted. Labor wins 34%. That's about 20%. It comes to 20% of registered voters actually voted for Labor last night. Yep. Um, well, the the turnout is also an indictment of the entire electoral process and all of the parties. I mean, the the number of people that are so disaffected. I mean, this is dumb. It, it's Tweedledee and tweed, Tweedledum for a lot of people at this point. Right. Okay, and, and right. you know, I, I'm still going to get to it, but I mean, Labor won. Well, you know, enjoy your victory. Okay, yes. as ephemeral as it's going to be, it's going to be extremely ephemeral because. Um... It's going to be very hard for Labour to to keep this um, alliance together because, um, let's say, the issue of immigration. Obviously, the country is very upset about immigration levels. Now, the problem is that you know some of the people who voted for Labour want tighter, quite a lot, want tighter control in immigration. But you've got the whole all the other people think that oh no, we're, we're you know Britain's being very unfair to immigrants. You know, we've got to be much more welcoming to immigrants. Diversity is our strength. Exactly, diversity is our strength. I don't know how you're going to keep these two <laughs> strands together. Well, I mean, it gets down to is that, you know, I don't want to sound um, trite or anything like this, but this wasn't a really, it, it, just what my what, what very little George and I have uh, already said. I mean, this wasn't the, the landslide victory for labor. I mean, oh. this was a resounding rejection of the clown that had been running the country. That's right. That's, a, that, that, that's, a, that's exactly right. It, it, it was, and it's clear from the polls as to when when they were uh, when people were asked why are you voting um, for Labour, you know, a majority said because we hate the Tories. Yeah. They said, you know, we just want to get the Tories. Well, out. well I mean, it, it's interesting you say that we hate the Tories, and 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 we see this in elections all across the Western world. You know, there it's a focus on a group of decision makers and 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 people of influence, but. It, when they talk, it's not necessarily talking about their policies because their policy is going to be not much different than their no. right. Okay. No, no, no they're, they're exactly right. Yeah. Um, and um, and then here we have again 412 Labour, 120 Conservative. But here you can see the Liberal Democrats, they get 71. So they get 71. Reform gets four. And as we saw earlier, reform 
got a higher percentage of the vote than the these final Democrats. results, George. Are these the final results? These are the final results, yeah. Because okay, I thought reform ended up getting more seats than four. No, no, four was what they got. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, throughout the night, there was an expectation that reform would get around 13. Okay, there you go. Uh, and, that, that's and, where that number is. Okay, that's yeah, where and, and Farage, when he made, he made his initial statement, he said he was expecting it to get about 20, but in the end, it, 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 it he fell short. Well, for us, eighth time is the charm. Right. Yeah, he got it. He he did well. He 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 he, he, he got through eighth time the charm exactly. Um, and uh, uh, well, everybody, I don't want to forget George Galloway didn't. Right. Have... I'm I'm going to come to Galloway no, because sorry, also sorry. the um, I I wanted to do a little bit about the coverage of uh, okay. of, of Galloway. Um, but yeah, George Galloway lost. Um, we should also say that um. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn won, which again um, shows oh, yeah. that you know no great faith in Starmer. You know Starmer's great accomplishment was kicking out, you know Jeremy Corbyn, not just as leader but as 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 a member of the party. This this morning, um, uh, when I because you know because where I live in the time zone and all that, first thing I checked was two things: Jeremy and and um, uh, um, uh, Galloway. Galloway. Those are the two things I, I, I <laughs> my two favorites. Okay, and it was uh, George and I just. I'm, I'm getting ahead on George Galloway. I'll keep going, George. Right, right, yeah. Um, but I guess again, reform it gets a higher percentage of the vote than the Liberal Democrats. And look at the gap: seventy-one for the Liberal Democrats, seventy-one mm -hmm. seats, four seats for reform. I mean, it's 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 quite quite absurd. Um, and then here we have the seat share. So Labour gets thirty-four percent of the vote but 64% of the seats in parliament. Conservatives, 24% of the vote, 19% of the seats. Reform, 14% of the vote, 1% of the seats. Liberal Democrats, 12% of the vote, 11% of the seats. And then again, Greens, uh, SMP and so on. But you can see just how ridiculous it is. 14% of the vote and you get 1% of the, the seats. Uh, 34% of the vote, 64% of the seats. Clearly, there's there's, there's uh, something deeply wrong with that uh, voting system, but the Labour has very little incentive to do anything about it because they've got a huge majority. Why why would why waste time on proportional representation and uh, and and all the rest? Yeah, but see the you know people usually don't the average voters don't really focus very much on the mechanism. Everybody wants to know what the result is. Right. Okay. And that's the same thing in the United States. Okay, we, we you know, if you, there, there's a number of ways of looking at the electoral college, and there's the gerrymandering that goes on all that. I mean, there's a lot of intricacies here. But this this one chart, right. this one chart. You know, you look at uh, fourteen percent of us that voted, we get one percent. Is that kind of, uh, there's something deeply wrong? It, intuitively, it's deeply wrong. Yeah, it is. It really is. Um, and um... But yeah, another, Farage is going to play on this big oh, time. Farage, of course, will play on it. And Farage, um, you know, he's a, he's a very skilled uh, publicist. Uh, he knows how to get a, have a megaphone and um, and reach a public outside of parliament. Because if you're there with, say, four MPs, it's hard to make an impact within parliament. I mean, because, you, hey, you're just a tiny party. So even when you have a question to ask at prime minister's question time, it's essentially up to the speaker of the uh, the house to call on you, but if you're only you know you've got four seats, he's not going to bother calling you. He's going to call you know the, the the opposition party. So it's very hard within the mechanics of the parliamentary system. But because Farage is so skilled at um, at, at communication and getting on television on doing his own uh, podcast, so that he will indeed play on this. And as you said, he has to now be the opposition to Labour. I mean those. Hundred plus constituencies in which he's number two. Um, he's they, they, he's really got to work on that. Well, I mean, for the people that voted for the Reform Party, just take this on board, everyone. George, you know, is absolutely right. Nominally speaking, you have Labour, and then you're going to have the opposition, the uh, Tories. But for the voters of the Reform Party, they're the real opposition. Right. Like, it, 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 they, they, they see this uh, condominium of labor and conservative. Right. Okay. And, right. and and Nigel Farage, because of he's a very skillful, he's going to say, no, we are the opposition. They are the uh, parties of power. 
Right. Well, it's tweedledee, tweedledum all you right. want. But you know, Farage is going to say, no, I mean, you know, I'm not going to get a question uh, right. in the House of Commons. I'll do it outside. That's okay. exactly what he's going to do. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. And, and, and that's how you get your voice heard now. I mean, that's, that's, that's it. You know, you've got, a, you've got a megaphone. If you're trying to do it in Parliament, yeah, you don't get heard. But, you know, you've, you've got all these. I don't know. I, I assume he's, he's going to keep his slot on GB News. He does a, a, a talk show on GB News. I, I don't know if he's going to do it every day, which I think he does it now. But, I'm, you know, I think he's going to keep his slot. Um, it's a good it's a good platform for him. Uh, so, yeah, he's going to he's absolutely going to uh, uh, maintain his presence. Um, and here you have the the thought and you see Labour. In terms of the percentage of the vote, it says, you know, there's a, a plus 1.69% increase okay. since 2019. It's got nothing. It's, you know, it's almost no, no increase at all uh, in terms of the percent of the vote, but he's got fewer votes um, than, than he had then. So that's 9,700. So he couldn't even break the 10 million barrier that you at least get 10 million votes. Uh, Labour couldn't do that. Um, Tories, 6,800. And the Liberal Democrats, and then there you see reform that wins more than four million votes, which yeah. is you know that's, that's for a new party four million that's votes amazing. is pretty good. That is a see that is something that could never happen in the United States. Right. Okay. In right. a parliamentary system, you can do it. That that is um, almost like a political epiphany. That, that right. just, this doesn't happen often. No. Okay, this is no. very rare. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, it, it's it's a um, it is very rare because both in the United States and the UK, you, we're just used to this two-party system. And it's been like this election after election. You've got the two parties, and you know, Labour, Conservative, Conservative, Labour, and that's it. But now, I mean, you know, for the first time, there are indications that maybe you can break up that uh, the two-party well, system. To be, to be honest with you, George, when the Reform Party was announced, I was going basically uh, on precedent. Because remember, we had the Brexit party and all the hoopla around it and all right, that. Right. And it came up with zilch, yep. zilch. Yep. And so I, I, I'm really, I find this really astounding. Right. I mean, all of the barriers and the way they, they, you know, first past the post and all the rest of it, to get that many votes, yep. it's extraordinary in such a short amount of time. I mean, yep. they had no money. No, that is, exactly. And, um, and, and, they, they also had to overcome very negative publicity because, of course, the media were doing to the reform what they always do. Oh, look at this guy. He tweeted five years ago, you know, that, you know, blacks need to go home or, you know, that, you know, why don't they get off their lazy asses or whatever? Oh, he said this. And so this is the con this is what the media always do. They, they, they go through all of your tweets and all of your Facebook postings to find something that they can then uh, say, hey, Mr. Farage, what are you going to do about this guy? You know, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's, he made this racist tweet five years ago. Um, and so that's hey, the, the, the stat. Yeah. What was the lasting impression the official media, state media, wanted to make when it came in reference to Farage? Putin, remember that? Putin, right. exactly. That's Putin. Putin. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, they, they go through, did, did this person say anything nice about Russia? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so... Um, and then, and then again here you can see the 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 the, the votes. You know, um, Labour, Conservative, Liberal Democrats, and uh, and and again these um, the 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 total votes and um, and and the uh, the percentage. So really, thirty three point seven percent of the vote Labour. It's a great landslide. Um, no, you know, pretty much what Jeremy Corbyn got. So much less. Than what Corbyn got in 2017. So this is this is the man who had to be got rid of. He got it was less than what uh, Corbyn got in uh, 2017. Uh, about the same as what Corbyn got. Uh, fewer votes than Corbyn got in 2019. That's looking at the the total votes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So when you when you go um, on the left side. Oh, here when you you have the uh, the seats declared, and then right. you look at the the right hand column here. Is right. like, I don't understand this math. <laughs> I'm not good with numbers. Well, that's, but that, but that's the thing. The, the 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 math is that it's it's in this in the system. It just does. They you know the, there's simply no correlation between uh, your percentage share of the vote and uh, and how and how many MPs that you get. Um, 
But even, you know, but the, the polls were, were really wrong about Labour. They, they overestimated um, Labour's performance. Again, now, you know, with all the hoopla, oh, you know, Keir Starmer, Keir Starmer, you know, new news. But, they, but the fact is that the polls were wrong. They overestimated um, Labour hugely. Um, and, and you know, and, and therefore this, this is not really any kind of a landslide or, or anything <laughs> or remotely like that. Yeah, um sure. and and uh, so uh, and then when you think of you if you add the conservatives and reform together that's more than labor so that's yep. he's already you, you, you know labor has a problem when, when if you get 34% of the vote that means basically 66% don't want you that's not that's never a good situation to be in when you you got 66% don't want you um, uh, Nigel, Nigel Farage won this election. Yeah, no, you let's go thirty thousand feet in the air, look down. That's yeah. that's the real victory here. Yeah, yeah, ex exactly. But the media, the media don't play, don't don't want to uh, emphasize that. You know, in, in in fact, you know, if you look at the, the number of the charts, they don't even bother to mention reform. You know, because they deliberately well, uh, reform only won four MPs. Uh, so you know, what does it matter? But they don't want to say, yeah, but what about the the percentage of the vote? Um, and now, I mean, that's that's just a chart of how dismally the Conservatives did. Um, this goes back to 1832. So the Conservatives um, have the fewest number of seats since 1832. So you can see, you can see how you know the, the sort of the glory days. I mean, that was back you know in the 1930s when they had the national government. Then, um, then, then you have the the glory days of Thatcher in the 1980s when they were having they had big commanding majorities. Slumped in 1997 to Blair, and then made a recovery. You know, from 2010, and now boom, right down there. With the uh, worst since 1832, the 1832 Reform Act, you know, when they actually <laughs> increased the franchise. So since then, this is the worst performance for. Uh, I wonder if there's what, what kind of uh, spin, the, what kind of autopsy we're going to get from these people. The good thing is, is that most of the toxic elements of the party are gone. That that's a good sign. That maybe right. maybe the organism can recover. Right. Uh, my natural inc inc inclination is for the Tories personally. Okay. I just I just find it an abomination the characters that they put forward. Right. And it doesn't have to do with conservative values. No, nothing, nothing at all. That's no. why I never could make a difference between no, the two. No, 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 and, no. And because of that, Jeremy Corbyn was the only person I liked. People would always say, "Why do you like him?" Right. Like we, on a lot of issues, I agree with him right. on. Okay. We may be on different sides, nominally speaking, of the ideological spectrum. Right. But he's the only person, he is the only person with George Galloway right. that has ever spoken to me. Now, I'm, I'm, not a, uh, I'm not a voter there, right. okay? But I mean, again, from afar, these are the only two people that kind of actually made any sense to me on any issue that I can understand. Right, the, Tor the Tories are very much like, um, they're the sort of the Mitt Romneys and Paul Ryan. So, so for American viewers, you know, what are the Tories like? That's who they are, they're sort of Mitt Romney types. They're mainly preoccupied with pleasing the sort of the metropolitan elites, the metropolitan liberal elites, the people who edit newspapers, the people who are in the media. That's who they. That's who their main. That's who their constituency is. They they go every four or five years before elections. Yeah, we're going to do this or that. We're going to do this about immigration for businessmen. We're going to do all this. But ultimately, what they really care about is what the sort of the metropolitan media elites care about. Green New Deals, uh, you know, net zero, uh, you know, you know, and uh, you know, immigration. We've got to, be, you know, make, make sure we're not we're not um, uh, being uh, mean on on immigration. And of course, foreign policy, Ukraine, Ukraine. Yeah, yeah, everybody. So they don't. The not, there's nothing there. And of course, on all the other kind of social issues, you know, you know, um, trans, gay, and everything. You know, they go, yeah, yeah, we're we're we're, we're so liberal there on this. Well. You know, it's something I find really pathetic is uh, uh, alleged so-called conservatives. We don't want to be mean. Yeah. And get away from us. Right. I right. want to be mean. Right. Okay. Right. I have no problem with being right. mean. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They, they. 
It's very funny because Liz Truss, who kind of tried to reinvent herself, you know, over the past few months as a kind of populist um, conservative, she was anything but a populist. I mean, she was just she was among the uh, worst. Um, you know, like she, you know, she, you know, pushed for legislation to eliminate, to outlaw conversion therapy. Now. You know, whatever your feelings are about conversion therapies, you know, trying to, you know, people who are gay, who, who don't want to be gay and want to be straight. Again, you can have any any views you like on that. But nonetheless, why the, why does the government get involved in something like that? I mean, why is the government outlawing something some of, of that nature? I mean, if people want to uh, convert, fine. If they don't, fine. But but she has to do it just to show, hey, well, we're, we're, we're absolutely find it abhorrent. The idea that um, we have conversion therapy that you know any, anybody should seek to uh, stop being gay, you know that's Liz Truss. That's the mentality of Liz Truss before she reinvented herself <laughs> as a well, as a Trumpian she's, conservative. She's just as adept at that as she has with uh, investment policy, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that's right. You know the. the the only question that comes to my mind is that who, where do these people go? Do they go to um, uh, the, the the Blair uh, Institute, or they go to the Gates Institute, or they yeah. go to Soros? Where, where do they go? Well, let, let's trust. I would think now um, we'll try to go to one of these conservative think tanks um, in the United States. See if she can be, like, you know, heritage or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, like some of those conservatives. Uh, the, the maybe, maybe, the, yeah, well, yeah, it's heritage or you know, so, some of the others, um, American Enterprise Institute, um, and you know, see if they there's there's a gig for her. Um, but but you know, I mean, you know, once you're you're out of Parliament, it's not that easy necessarily to get back in, because. Um, in, As for us. <laughs> yeah, but the thing was in the way it works in in Britain, it's the constituency parties that select their candidates. So even if the national party wants Liz Truss back, and I don't know why they would, but let's say they wanted them back, they can't pressure the constituency parties that you've got to take um you know, Liz Truss as your candidate. I mean, if the constituency party said, no, she was terrible, we don't want her. So it's not at all easy if you're not really liked within the party to get a constituency. You And you want a constituency where you can win, you know, not not some safe Labour seat that you're going to lose. So uh, it's, 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 it's by no means, um, by, you know, by no means an easy thing now to get back into Parliament. Um, now, here we have, this is again very interesting. This is the regional swing. As you can see from 2019, you can see that um, um, the, in, in a number of places, there was a swing a, away from Labour since 2019. In the Northwest, you can see minus 3%, the swing away. Wales did very badly. So since 2019, minus 5%. London, minus 5% for Labour. And then south southwest also a small uh, decrease. Where did Labour really do well? Scotland, because the the Scottish National Party imploded, which is very nice. Um, and then other places, you know, they did a little, little little bit better. But you can see number of places, Labour did significantly worse than they did in uh, twenty nineteen. Um, but they made up for it in uh, in the blowout in Scotland. And. Um, and then here we have um, our friend uh, George Galloway, and here is this gleeful um, uh, comment from the so, the Telegraph. Oh God! But, wait, wait, wait. but, but notice, what a, a tasteless. Well, it's tasteless, wow. but on the other hand, very revealing. Goodbye, yes. Galloway. This was a triumph for Israel. Now. It, this is not what do with the British election. No, it <laughs> hasn't. But but in the, but this is a headline written without irony. I mean, you mind you, this is somebody not saying. You know, somebody would be say sarcastically, "Oh, victory for Israel, Galloway is beaten." No, no, no. This is somebody writing in the Telegraph, rejoicing that this is a victory for Israel. Um, Britain has breathed a sigh of uh, relief. And then Britain, especially British Jews, breathed a sigh of relief for years. Galloway has worn his Israelophobia as a brazen badge of honor, a way of winning support from hardline sections of the Muslim community. He never deserved to be in public life. 
Now he has got what he deserved. Well, let's say before you go here, let's mm -hmm. go back. Mm -hmm. Britain, especially British Jews, so all British Jews are the same, right? <laughs> Again, they do this. They yeah. do this all yeah. the time. Ooh. They do. Yes, that's right. Um, that, yeah, they, they always do this, of course. Um, but, you know, like, like always the Jews always think the same way, um, which they obviously don't. Um, and but particularly when you're on the subject of Israel, again, they certainly don't think the same way on uh, Israel. And then um, Galloway's history of Jew baiting is long and disgraceful. Also, the people who write in this way about what Jews think, British Jews or American Jews, are often not even Jews themselves. They presume to speak on behalf of Jews, thinking that in some way they're going to, they're going to get rewards, some brownie points for, for this. Among his achievements were declaring Bradford an Israel free zone, appearing regularly on the propaganda mouthpieces of Russia and Iran, and being pictured receiving a Palestinian passport from Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh. I've never heard that before. No, I've never heard this either. Never heard uh, that. Now, yeah. the, the thing is, when they, and, they and, and if it were true, it would have been all over social media. That's right. Okay. But you see, what you have to keep in mind, whenever he says these things about Israel uh, free, he specifically is referring to Israel. He's not talking about Jew free. He's talking about Israel free. I mean, I don't know about what he Maybe he's talking free. about a free Israel. That's right. But I mean, I don't know, that, again, what the context is with Bradford. But when he said about... Um, uh, I think it was about a football match. The Euro Europe, I think it was a few years back about the European Champions League match, and he said, "Oh, there weren't any um, Israel flags um, on the uh, on the cup. Liverpool won it against the Tottenham Hotspur." He was saying that the Tottenham Hotspur owners were basically, you know, fanatically pro-Israel uh, activists and saying that there are no Israel flags on the cup. And of course, that was taken to be. Oh, he's attacking oh, Jew free and whatever. He said, no, no, it's Israel free. I don't want Israel flags on the cup. These people are so crass. Okay. Right. They're so right. toxic. Right. Right. Um, however, you know, it, 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 you know, it's going to be quite difficult, though, for um, Gall Galloway now um, to, to get back in because, again, you know, it's, um, uh, you know, you know, you've got to, got to pick the right constituency and and um, uh, uh, and so on. And I don't, to be honest, think that that's best the best forum for him. Um, you know, he 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 oh, has a he has a platform. I think he has an influence on his platform. I don't know whether being in Parliament, a one solitary member in Parliament, that that's a particularly effective way of getting his message across. George Galloway is going to be just fine. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, you know, you know, again, he's got he does his show and, and 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 so on um the mother of all talk shows and um well i, I again uh, pierce morgan I, I this guy's in this um you know i, I don't know self appreciation i mean he does roger waters which roger waters could have done much better in the interview but pierce morgan just was had his ass handed to him again yeah. i mean it was just it's it's not even you know, at first it's like yeah go george you know, right. and at some point he feels like this is a pathetic uh, right. exercise. Yeah. Piers Morgan, you have the inability to learn. You've sh that's what you show. That, that's what your program is all about. How stupid you are! <laughs> right, right, yeah. No, that that's the that's the extraordinary thing about uh, Piers Morgan. He brings on, you know, good people. You know, whether it's Norman Finkelstein or um, Jeffrey Sachs or uh, Mearsheimer, and then he listens to them, and and then boom. <laughs> In one ear and out the other. I mean, yeah, he just douses himself with kerosene and lights a match right in front of us all. Right, right. So, but there it is. You know, you, you know. Uh, uh, I, I mean, we he had on Mearsheimer and Sachs, really, you know, very close to um, e each other. And then he uh, he sends out that tweet about um, uh, Nigel Farage, Putin's little puppet. That's it. So after after everything, everything that was explained to him by Sachs and Mearsheimer, he still calls a Nigel Farage Putin's little puppet because but you know Farage said that this this war was provoked by NATO expansion. What the hell do you think Mearsheimer was saying to you and Sachs was saying to you for an hour 
and, the, and the, well, obviously, I, I don't know. He, he sort of looks intelligent for listening. Mm, 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 mm. Obviously, he's like, well, he didn't well, think yeah, well, about I, any I of met, that. I met him at a party in 1983. And, right. And, and, yeah, it's all you know, name dropping, and, right. and it, it's it's so. It's so blase, but um, uh, George Galloway is a great man, and we're going to stand by him in whatever his endeavors are in the future. He's well, uh, well known and well positioned in the media sphere, so he's going to keep on doing that. Jerry, Jeremy Corbyn, good for you. Okay, right. the guy that's prime minister now stabs you in the back. Okay, right. I hope we'll hear more about that in public. Okay, right. You know, th th these people, oh. You know, they, you know, the good labor, bad Tories. No, there are just as many bad people in the Labour Party. Okay. No, that, 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 that's right. And of course, it will be kind of embarrassing for um, uh, for Starmer because there will be Corbyn. Now, Corbyn, obviously, he, he will not be sitting on the Labour benches, but nonetheless, he will see him uh, there. And, um, and you know, it'll be quite quite embarrassing uh, for him. You know, there'll be, uh, you know, when... At, if he gets called in Prime Minister's question time and uh, Cor Corbyn will ask him. And Rush, Starmer went out of his way to get Corbyn out. He wanted yep. Corbyn beaten in yep. his own constituency and that failed, failed spectacularly. It wasn't uh, close. Um, so <laughs> that again, it's a reflection of basically how little clout Starmer has. I mean, imagine if, you, if you're sweeping... He's such a lightweight. He's such a lightweight. I mean... I, um, in preparation um, for, um, for this conversation, I went, you know, mainstream and looked at articles about him. I mean, I'm, even people that admire him don't have much to say. There's not much there. <laughs> I mean, right. they have, these are people right. that like him. <laughs> right, right. Nothing. No, exactly. He's the son of a toolmaker. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know he was the son I, of a toolmaker? I tool kept maker. coming across that. I kept coming across that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I really know about him, except for his involvement with Julian Assange. <clears throat> exactly, a negative involvement. A black yeah. mark. What he did to Jeremy Corbyn, a black mark. Right. And his father was a toolmaker. Those are the three things I really know. <laughs> but it's also very strange that because of the way he keeps talking about that, he's essentially talking down his father. I mean, you're saying, well, you know, my father, he was only a toolmaker. Well, I don't know, a toolmaker, that sounds like a very skilled job. A you should job. admire somebody who, who made tools. Most people don't know how to make tools. They don't even know how to use tools. So he's he, that's a skilled job. Toolmakers, they have a good job. Yeah, that's a very good job. And, and, and you know, job. And obviously, it, you know, his mother was a nurse. So that's two, that's a two income family. Um, He had, uh, he had brothers and sisters. I think he had three brothers and sisters. So I get a, get a, a middle class life, uh, you know, not not wealthy, not not by no means prosperous, but nonetheless, stop pretending that you're sort of you know living hand to mouth on the street. And, and plus, you know, you know, uh, uh, he um, uh, late in life, in his fifties or uh, when he was fifty, he entered Paul reluctantly. Re yes, all oh, this bullshit. This guy, he stabbed his way up the ladder yeah. okay he slit throats this guy has no moral compass whatsoever oh he's interested in human rights and all that. <laughs> yeah that's but, a, that's a good then, one and, the and human then right. after october 7th you know yeah i think they had to starve him dead yeah they don't give me any electricity right. oh, i was that was taken out of context okay right. this is who he is you guys that's right that's that yeah that, that's a kind of um that, that part is very funny they always say oh he's a human rights lawyer now let me think i mean he isn't he the one who tried to make sure that Julian Assange's human rights were denied, tried to make sure that he, he was unable to resolve this problem with Sweden over, uh, you know, so that he could actually have this interview with the Swedish uh, prosecutor. The Swedes were ready to do this. I mean, he, he, sab he Starmer sabotaged essentially having this uh, uh, conference, which would be done by video, uh, and then he Starmer stopped this. So, Human rights lawyer, you know. I mean, what human rights? Um, so, uh, and then of course he's he's very very pro I mean, his wife is an you know Israeli, and uh, you know very that's that's all a kind of a, uh, a a big a big deal for him. So uh, nothing much is to be expected from him. I think he's going to run into a lot of trouble very quickly. It's a as we look at these numbers, this is a, a you know a kind of a fake fragile um quote landslide unquote keep in, uh, keep in mind everyone you know it, it, at first blush you know a huge majority think about how parliaments work okay 
they're going to, he's going to need a lot of powerful whips to keep a right. lot of people under control. Okay. Right. And in the first few weeks, he's going to show his metal. He's not a real leader. Okay. No. No. And people are going to start sniffing around and they're going to start, you know, on their machinations. And you need powerful, when you have so many people to keep an eye on, right. you need powerful whips to keep them in line. We'll see if that's going to happen. This 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 happened to Tony Blair. You know, right. they, you know, it was a big majority, but then it's same keeping everyone under control right. and it being a lot more difficult. Okay, right. He, right. And, and to be all, you know, George and I always do uh, go out of our way to take down um, uh, Blair a few notches. Okay, it's my natural disposition. But he was a good politician. I never denied that. Well, he he was, and unlike um, Starmer. Um, he had a, a certain flair, you know. He had a, he had an energy about him. He had a kind of vitality, um, and you could see why people were energized by his uh, presence. I, I mean, with Starmer, it really is a classic case of you know, you know, he's a man who lights up a room the moment he leaves it. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's, he's a wet towel. He's a wet yeah, towel. I mean, even when he, he was giving he always his... has been and always will right. be a wet yeah, towel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even when he was giving his speech today on uh, Downing Street. It was a dreary speech. You know, you're already looking at your watch after about five minutes. Well, um, can, can we sort of wrap this up? Uh, but you know, it's a, just ban banalities. But even banalities uttered in a, a very flat, uninspiring uh, way. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just not, it's, it's not, it's, he's not going to do well. I don't think the public is ever going to take to him. And yeah. when they don't take to you, then I think you're going to run into trouble quite quickly. I kind of miss the Gordon Browns and stuff like that. I mean, I mean the guy had, you know, he he was very, very awkward, but he I, he always struck me as a bit genuine. And do you remember with the hot mic thing? When, when, yeah, the hot mic thing, yeah. But that, 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 I, I, you know, I just felt like, you know, does he deserve this? I mean, it, it was the Blair curse. He had to wait in the wings for so long for Tony Blair to move on. And as soon as he gets it, the, the financial crisis of 2008, the the hot mic thing, I mean, this guy couldn't yeah. do anything right. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing about the hot mic, because what happened was, you know, he revealed who he was. I mean, everyone knows politicians despise uh, people. Everyone knows this. They they pretend, you know, oh yeah, yeah, you know, you know, they, you know, as if somehow, you know, touching flesh, you know, shaking hands and slapping backs and so on. And then, well, that and was then, Bill Clinton, and he did like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know that he did. I think he was very. He oh, was, I think I think it, it gave him, you know, being the predator that he is. He had so well, much. Well, I I, th I think so. But you know, people who know Bill Clinton personally say he's not at all like that in private. He's actually kind of a kind of nasty, you know, um, bad tempered when they he's in private. Are. Yeah, no. exactly, exactly. But the problem with Gordon Brown is that he was angry that he had to answer the question of an ordinary person. She asked a very good question. He didn't have a very good answer. And he's angry. Why did you put me into this position of having to answer? Yeah, but when he was, that's exactly it, George. I mean, it's just that, why did it happen to me? Everybody, yeah. I'm not anybody different, different from anybody else. You know, and why was the hot mic on me? That's right. what he was angry about. Right, yeah, no, no, that's right. Now, Trump is very good at that. Trump is very good at-, at You at see him in the golf cart? Yeah, yes, yes. Oh, that- you guys, it, it, that's all you need to know. And he was tipping a guy. Mm -hmm. He was here. He is on a golf course, right? In a golf cart, right. and he got cash in his pocket. That's right. This is not. This is twenty twenty four. Everybody, right? You know, he, he's yes. like saying, "Give me, you know, give me what's your what's your bank number?" <laughs> he pulls out. It looked like a fifty dollar bill or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, it, it was a good. Yeah, that's right. It was a, he just just start tip tipping this guy. <laughs> But see, but that's the difference. And that's, you know, I don't want to, well, we've already started it. But, you know, here's a guy, very privileged background, okay? Uh, he doesn't have to put on airs, no. okay? And he comes across uh, uh, a caddy or, you know, somebody carries his bag and he says, hey, you know, here, take this kid, take it, you know, don't spend it all in the same place. That's I right. mean, that's, that's why people like him. They disintuitively that's think that, you know, he tipped a guy, you know, tipping is, you know, and he's against, he wants to have a law against 
taxing tips. A lot, a lot of people say that. I that's my guy. That's, right. that's that's exactly. Do you think somebody like Joe Biden could ever think about some? Well, he can't think at all anymore, right, unfortunately. Right. No, that, they, no, that that's exactly right. They, 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 yeah, no taxes on tips. That gets you, all of your waiters and all your bus boys, and in particularly in states like Nevada, which is that they, they you know that's the biggest constituency in Nevada, waiters right. and bus boys. Uh, so yeah, great. No taxes on uh, on tips. I mean, a lot of the time they don't declare their tips, but they have to declare something. Otherwise, the the IRS gets very suspicious. Yeah, they need you to go after earn any money boy. at all. Bus boys are in, and you know on the top of our list to go after. Exactly. Okay, yeah. not not Hunter Biden. Okay, yeah, exactly. And they do they do go after. You know, you know, oh, wait, yes, the, they well, do. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, where you didn't make any money at all? You know, this year. Well, well, well you know, then, then you're in trouble. You know, because you basically you didn't declare all the tips you made. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that's that's the, uh, the the British election. And um, I think um, a, a very dismal performance by Labour. I think that's the, that's yes, the, that's uh, the story from that, you know, <laughs> a Labour landslide that wasn't. Well, it, it, just to finish off on this. What, why would nominally uh, um, centre right be speaking so well of the Labour Party's performance because it's a center party. These are they they all travel in the same circle. This is like a, 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 a um like a lit candle in darkness because the the the, the neoliberal project is crumbling in front of our eyes. But this this is an indication that there's still hope. There's still hope to turn it around. Labor is going to turn it around for the Western world. No, this is completely BS. Yeah, no, that, that's right. I think that's the that's the um, the message they're trying to convey, which is, hey, well, look, you know, the, you know, e even so bad. In, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, the the center left. You know, the center left is, you know, they 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 won. You know, we got a you know got a big, got a big victory, and then you say, no, not really. Um, you've got a, you, you you just essentially got a huge problem on your hands. People have ex expressed their disgust um, with the ruling party. Doesn't mean that they have expressed any confidence or any enthusiasm for you. That means that you're going to be in a lot of trouble very very quickly. This is who am I imitating right now? Nigel Farage. <laughs> Times up. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, that's our, our wrap here. Um, I, I think George and I are saying things that you're not going to find most places. You know why? Because George looked at the numbers. Yeah. He didn't look at the headlines. Right. He didn't look at an opinion page, you know, you know what this all means, and then repeat it. George went in, he, you know, he went deep, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that's the difference, you know, that, that's the difference we try to uh, bring here, okay? Right. It's not what you think, as yeah. usual. All right. Anyway, we need to do another podcast here. Um, this is a gaggle with Peter and George. We're on local, so please go to the gaggle gaggle.locals dot com. Um, Apple, do you want to say something? <laughs> he gave me that look. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not I really. want to say something. Where, where are the goddamn tips? You know, that's what I got to say. Where, where are they? <laughs> All right. So, George, uh, we have our next, you have your next live stream. Yeah, I, I got a next live stream on Tuesday, and then, you know, you and I have our live stream on Monday. Uh, so that's at 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern time, and mine is at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern time. And Johnny Apple, he just, he wants to see money clinking into tip jars. Otherwise, you know, I'm out of here. Uh, that's, that's, uh, so uh, we're very grateful for all of your help, friendship, and support. The more you're able to donate, the more of these videos we can make, the more we can improve on the technology. And above all, you know, we might put Apple into a better mood, which is a, a main priority for us. So remember, if you like the gaggle, please like, share, and subscribe. See you soon. Bye.